Hello, and welcome to Pacific Drive. So we're getting started today. We've got, well, we're going to be going into a new play, uh, a new save here. And let's see, we can customize some settings. Right. So, <laughs> a few things we like: accessibility, as gameplay. Um, we've actually got a Let's see, difficulty. Yeah. We've got, like, actually some decent uh, ways of changing the difficulty yourself here as well. Put part in your, uh, on your car for one of your hand in interaction. Easy ignition. Easy shifter. <laughs> Tap to shift gears. Yeah. Protect player when car doors are closed. <coughs> Allow wet weather to affect handling. Uh, endless headlights. <laughs> and other things like here. Um, so modifiers. Top up fuel, battery levels, and player health. Upon return to the auto shop. So that'll just like do it automatically. So lots of ways you can kind of make it easier or even harder if you want we're going to keep it to the defaults at least for our first playthrough on that um, <coughs> now if you've been watching the channel you'll have seen this in the steam next fest I did cover it we played through the demo uh, in addition to that so <coughs> so yeah there's that steam next fest so but in addition, we're, we're going to be kind of just playing through the first part of the game today. Probably mostly through the tutorial. If you don't know what it's about, I'll give you a bit of a brief overview as we get through the uh, opening scenes here. So Pacific Drive, as you can kind of see from all the text coming up, essentially a there's been an event that's happened and... It's ended up in the the area where it all happened, being sectioned off, and it's all been covered up. Yeah? It's all happened, it's all been covered up, and it's all behind this giant wall. It's all gone, it's all gone down in the, I think it's the area's called the Pacific Northwest, I want to say it's Northwest, I know it's like a cardinal direction or something that it is but along an area called the Olympic Peninsula what's quite nice here you won't be able to tell but on the controller they are utilizing the because I'm playing on PlayStation there's yeah you, you get all the haptic feedback so I can feel the engine revving at the moment quite interesting um, um, so as I was saying so something happened and what's left in this exclusion zone are the remnants of well it's all the aftermath as to what happened lots of anomalies mysterious stuff going down if you ever played stalker or games like that. You know, if you've ever played, it's very similar to that. Um, so we're basically going to be playing Stalker, but with a car. Um, if you are looking at this and you're thinking, ooh, maybe I should give Stalker a go, I wouldn't, it's very old. But well, there is a sequel coming out soon, so you might be interested in looking that up. Um, anyway. So, throughout this, we're going to be looking after a car. I've just realised as well, I've been driving on the left the entire time. <laughs> Let's get over on the right. We are in America after all. Right. 
Right, so, yeah. The, na the aim of the game is to basically we'll be in the... Uh, we'll be in a car. As you can see. And it's going to be about fixing and maintaining our car while we search for a way out. And as for a way out of what? Well, you're probably getting the idea at this point. I mean, of course, the question then is, well, how do we end up getting in, right? How does one end up getting over that wall? Because, uh, just putting it out there, it's a big ass wall. <laughs> As you can see, some of the anomalous, anomalous stuff is kind of uh, leaking out of the wall. It's not all completely contained. So this is a pocket of what is called instability in the game. Essentially the physical rules of our world are no longer fully in effect. So we're getting this weirdness. Beyond the wall beyond the wall, it's like this in more or less its entirety. got the battery being cut. And as you'll notice, now the wall was on our right before. It's now on the left. <laughs> as for our car. <laughs> well. Right. And this uh, effect on the screen and the noise. That is us taking radiation damage, so when it's telling us to sprint, yeah, there's a good reason why we're being told to sprint here. We're being dropped off in a radioactive hatch on the other side of the wall. So as I said, the physical laws of the world that don't really apply to these pockets of instability. And so it opening up a wormhole and sucking us across, um, not necessarily impossible because of these anomalies and that. Right. But we're now going to be introduced oh, to the true there. star of the game. Oh. Uh, I swore I... Francis, the radar's acting up again. You were supposed to tune up this piece of junk years ago. So we're hearing them through the car radio, I believe. I have to hold it. There we go. I think that's everything that we need to do. But we now have a new ride. And you'll notice straight away that yes, we have to do everything. We have to do everything right. It's all very tactile. Francis Cook, located in mid zone sector B. Do you read me? <clears throat> I'm picking up your distress signal in the outer zone. It looks like you're somewhere around sector E. Hey, Francis, come here. Yes, 
Yes, it's urgent. Leave that interferometer alone for a second. Something is out there. Right. Hey, we got a live one. Hey, do you copy? Hello? Hello? Ooh. Is this thing working? They, 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 they don't have a transmitter. We won't hear a thing back. Huh. But if they're stranded, could they, I mean, they're from outside? They're a preacher? Hey, hey, how did you get through the barrier wall? No one's gotten into the zone in ages and lived to tell about it. And if we don't get them to safety, this one won't either. That's a good point. Hey, hey you're in serious danger. The instability's closing in, and it's gonna scramble you quicker than beef in a blender. The closest shelter is a few miles east. Get there however you can, and be quick about it. Right. <clears throat> so as you can see, we've got, uh, it's a bit of a banger, <laughs> but at least we've got a, a ride, and we need to get it filled with fuel, and this is basically what the game's mostly going to be like, um, oh, we need the fuel can. So, <clears throat> this is basically what it's going to be like all the way through. It's, we're going to be look, maintaining our car, looking after it, upgrading it, as we basically try to find a way to get out. <coughs> as I've mentioned, we've managed to breach into here, not that we meant to. Right, we'll get this as full as we can. But one thing I do like about the game is that it's got this very... Uh oh. <coughs> it's got this very tactile feel to it. Like, everything you do... Like, okay, I want to drive on. I have to look down, put it into gear. There it is again, that flip on the spectrometer. I've seen that waveform before, but where? Could it be? A remnant? That can't be. There hasn't been one in decades. Look at that spectral fingerprint and tell me that doesn't match the remnants exactly. No, no, no. What, what, what we should be looking at is how fast this preacher seems to be moving. Huh. You know, you know if I didn't know better, I'd say they're going about the speed of a... No way. No way to not tell me. They found a remnant and it's a car this time? Holy cripes! No one's had working wheels in here for ages. Boy, I'd kill to know how a combustion engine's still chugging away out there. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, the breacher needs to get to safety. Then we can look into whether that car is a remnant or not. In my heart of hearts, I already know. They're back, baby. When you find that shelter, go on and let yourself in. Now, I'll be ain't gonna like you poking around in there, but better to face a bad side than let the zone eat you alive. So as they've mentioned, the car is what they call a remnant, so we're going to be finding out more about those as we go on, but my understanding from the demo is that these remnants are basically, um, <coughs> it's like um, they're parts of the zone. Right, the parts of the zone that have essentially, um, like they've been, I guess they've got like certain properties about them that make people obsess over them. So, it's, when you get one, it will slowly but surely drive you insane and all you'll care about is the remnant. And you'll just become obsessed about it until eventually you uh, you try to run off into the zone into the middle carrying the remnant and lose your mind and probably die um, not that that's gonna happen at all we're not we're not gonna be obsessed about this car it's fine and 
this will be our base of operations going forwards. Who is there? No, the shop. God, it's been breached. You've got five seconds to get the hell out before I... Ow! Oh, my head. Uh, it's an emergency broadcast. Hello, uh, attention. This message is for Dr. Ophelia Turner. Send a preacher to your garage on a, a official zone business. Now we have it on very good authority that this person is in possession of a remnant, which has taken the form of a car and well uh the whole on the remnant thing. She's not gonna care. Um, uh, right, like I said, super official zone business. The protocol uh, demands that you keep them alive until we can get them to safety. Now if you do not comply, I will occupy this broadcast channel with a recitation of the entire collection of poems I've personally written. That's 10 years and 17 volumes and... Oh, tell her that voice goes like a nail gun to the skull. So, <laughs> another breacher, huh? How do you outsiders not understand that Arda didn't build that 300 meter wall out there for fun? Unless you're one of the unfortunates who got zapped through. Wait, I just remembered. I don't give a damn why or how you got here. You're trespassing, and I'd kindly like you to get the hell out of my zone. Oh, God, unfortunately, the barrier wall is as fortified against breaches trying to get in as it is against anyone or anything trying to leave. We have to find you a way out. So you might as well start by fixing up that car. Just don't break anything in my shop with those soft hands of yours. Right, so, there we go. We've now, meet, uh, now we've met most of the oh, cast. What? Oh, you need help? Well, there's a headset somewhere in the garage. Put it on. The built-in diagnostic will tell you what needs fixing up. So we've got a backpack. We've got our headset. And that enables the UI. Lovely. So, now that we can see what we're doing, <coughs> we want to start refilling everything. So, that means health. Uh, let's see. Put the wheel back on. That would be helpful. <laughs> so, these things happen. A surprisingly large amount of, uh, of the time, this will, this sort of thing will just keep happening. When I say it's a bit of an old banger, I am not kidding you. It really is. Um, add to your to-do list. So I want to go here. Um, where are we? Blueprints and crew door, and we can add it to the checklist. And it gives us all the parts we require uh, to construct a door. Right. Let's see. Uh, gather items from the abandoned car behind the garage. Search for the abandoned car's trunk. Uh, search the toolbox by the garage door for a pry bar. So we've got a few bits and bobs here. We'll grab them all. Um, and we want to assign this to a quick slot. So we've got our crowbar now. We can pry this, pry this open. Grab everything from it. And then we need to go here. That's going to give us a scrapper and some road flares. Now, if you're wondering what the friendly dumpster is, this is basically the pity box. <laughs> if you're coming after a run <coughs> and you're completely totaled, you can open up this uh, magic dumpster and it will occasionally give you some good items. The more damaged you can, the less stuff you've got. 
the more likely it is to give you some really good items. So we can expect to get, you know, things like spare doors, uh, panels, that sort of thing. <coughs> and if you're wondering, no, we can't just take these off and reattach them to our object. Rip them apart. I believe there's upgrades later on that allow you to do that, but we're not at, we're not at that point yet. The best way you can do at the moment is just shred it to bits. But yeah, all, all this and the dumps and that are basically a way of making sure that you can at least repair your car to a minimum level, so you don't accidentally soft lock the game essentially. <laughs> right. Looks like we've got everything we need on the left. Let's make a door. got both doors on here, we'll put it here I guess then. Now we're going to do some repairs. Let's have a look then, uh, repair putty. This is a really cool effect that I loved from the demo. <coughs> We're just gonna slot that on. Very satisfying side, uh, sound effect. I could honestly watch it just doing that all day. <coughs> Dirty door. It's all warped and broken. And slowly turns full health into a nice clean door. But actually, it's still a bit busted. And you'll, you'll notice as well, the the reason we've got this weird patchwork effect on them. So, for example, this is a steel panel. Right? And so it comes out, it looks quite nice. There's a bit of rust on the edges, but otherwise pretty good. <coughs> we've got a steel door, but this is a crude door. So it's kind of just a junk door that we've thrown together and patched up with bits of duct tape and things like that. So we've got a crude panel here. So it's not a proper steel panel. So even when it's repaired, it still looks like absolute crap. <laughs> um. <coughs> right. Oh, that's full health, that's why I can't do on it. And we're just going to repair everything. Normally, coming back, you probably wouldn't repair absolutely everything. You know, some of the stuff here was in decent enough shape. Like, I probably wouldn't repair this bumper. You know, it's, it's more or less fine. But, part of the tutorial is it wants us to repair everything. So, we're going to. And we've got enough repair putty to repair everything and have one repair putty left which we can put in the back for later. So we've got a flat. So what we're going to want to do is we need some ceiling, we need a ceiling kit. So we're going to go here. And we've got our ceiling kit. Looks like this cool crazy little gun. It down here. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Jobs are good and so we've, we've sealed up the uh, what's it? We've patched up the tire and it's all inflated. Car looks good now. Right. Scan the loose wheel.
So, it's loose and it needs a mechanics kit. And we're going to find that this will keep happening. Again, this is half of the game is just maintaining the car. And it's also half of fun. <clears throat> right. We're going to need some duct tape. Oh, we've got one in our inventory. It looks like it just gave us one out of one of the boxes that we've uh, looted when we got in. So, let's get this fixed. Bonk, bonk, bonk. There we go. <coughs> right. Install the cardboard boxes in the car. Again, one thing that I really like about this is just the tactile feel to it. You know, you go and grab the boxes and you put them in. I don't just go to the bench over here and press the install uh, storage boxes button and they just appear. <coughs> you have to actually take the craft mat here and you set it up. Oh, <clears throat> there's a little prototype of mine in the garage. The arc device. Hook it up to your car, wherever it'll fit. Right. And yeah, now we've got our first weird beauty won't just 80 be your sci fi gizmo. It's your North Star and the only way back to safety. Heck, you should consider it the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit if you plan on staying alive. That's how important this thing will be to you. Yes, that's my very own invention. I'll tell you more about it if you live long enough to use it. As you can probably guess, from the looks of it. That's basically our user interface and map, uh, mini-map, while we're in the car. Very useful. Um, so we've got some stuff in the locker. And we've got a spare tire in there. And we're just kind of going to put these in, so... We've got a spare tyre, we've got some repair putty, we've got some med kits. Um, the other junk... Actually, we can keep the road flares on us. But yeah, our raw materials and things we probably don't want to bring along, because they're just going to take up room. It wants us to, well, it's wanting us to put these in the trunk, but really we should probably have those on hand. And we've got some blueprints over here. So this will teach us how to use a gear. So we can now make gears and an impact hammer. And they're the first few items that we're going to need when we get into the area. Right, we'll fill her up. And throw the battery charging switch. If you're all set, take a look at the projector against the wall. Honestly, if charging batteries were that fast, it'd be brilliant. <laughs> right. This is the zone. Within these borders, all matter has lost the ability to hold a constant physical state. What that means is the shape, size, and makeup of just about everything constantly changes. A mile of grass can turn into ten miles of swamp in the blink of an eye, and it does. Constantly. It's caused by something we call instability. We're completely surrounded by it, and once you've watched it chew through entire mountain ranges, you'll understand that you don't want to get anywhere near it. We can only survive in here within pockets of stability. That's what you're standing in now. And that's what you're seeing mapped on the route planner. If we're going to find you a way out of the zone, you'll need to build a new antenna. Until then, you won't be able to detect stabilized routes beyond your immediate area. So, you've got to go hunting for parts, and that means taking a drive. Go on, pick a route. The Arc device in your car will then show you where you need to go. 
Right, so we've only got one option. We'll be going here. Off you go. Make a left out of the garage, follow the access road. So, what we've got is this is basically choosing our next. Uh, well, basically, th this is where it kind of forms a bit of a roguelike esque take. So, each route, though we've only got the one available, has certain conditions to it, and it's almost like a run in a roguelike. We'll go there, there'll be a bunch of resources and. Uh, points of interest we want to investigate to get parts and upgrades and then after a while the instability will start to eat away at the place and we'll have to make our way out you'll see how that is and it's very intense and cool when it, when it eventually happens and we have to basically uh, drive our way out there while screaming trying to trying to get to the exit if we make it we get all our stuff back uh, that we've uh, looted, we get all our stuff, we get back here and we can do some upgrades. If we don't make it, the car takes some severe damage, we'll lose some of the items that we grabbed, and we don't get the uh, like the rare resource and energy and stuff that we grabbed, as far as I know, that's what we've got. This being our first mission, you can see on the right here, so we've got route analysis, there's, um, let's see, toggle legend, so things like Route analysis there, we've got atmospheric shifts, anomaly density, radiation, storms, fuel, vehicle density, building. So that's telling us about the kind of um, the conditions of the route that we'll be taking. So those conditions will be active. So for example, radiation and storms are fine. There's no weird anomaly density or atmospheric, sh atmospheric shifts. Um, the there's a decent amount of buildings, cars, and there's some extra fuel there. There's no resources, which is, I guess, it means the rarer resources, the stuff that you really go out there for. There's not really much of that, as you can see. So, because obviously it's the first one. We've got here, perpetual... Stability is our junction conditions, and this will be quite important. Um, in fact, it's not saying what it is at the moment. I guess we must have to go through it once to get it, but my understanding is the first mission does not have a timer on it. Normally, you would have a, a certain amount of time before the instability settles in. So, this first mission will be really taking our time. And we'll be trying to, as best as we can, just get as much stuff as we can. There's not really much there in the, in the way of like anomalies and dangers. So compared to the rest of the game, this is going to be a paradise. We want to try and grab absolutely everything from here. Really go nuts. Just grab all the stuff that we can. Because beyond this point... We're going to have limited amounts of time and it's going to be w much more difficult. So if we can get a couple extra upgrades on this, we'll want to. Anyway, with the route picked, we're ready to go. I'm going to be calling it there for the episode. Thank you very much for watching. But it's because uh, if you're unaware, the when I'm recording on the PlayStation using like the share button functions on it, you get about, it's got a hard limit of an hour of recording before it just cuts the recording. And it, it will literally cut you off mid-sentence. <laughs> but yeah, so we've got, we can do a maximum of an hour, and I think that that mission alone will probably take the best part of an hour. So putting that on top of this tutorial and opening sequence, it'll go well over the amount of time that we can go for here. We haven't split it into two episodes, so... I'm going to split it here where it makes sense. Thank you very much for watching, though. This has been Pacific Drive. So we'll be doing that route next time. More to come. This will probably be a series I'll be doing from start to finish. Uh, I do intend to play the crap out of this game on the run-up to... Probably it's going to be this, and then I think after this, up next is Dragon's Dogma 2. So I've got like a good, a good month on this. <laughs> Just this and hell dives all the way up to then. But, 
if this has piqued your interest, more coming up on the channel, stay tuned for that. And we'll be, as I mentioned, taking that route next time. We'll take our time and it'll be a nice kind of first outing to get ourselves a few upgrades and then things will start to get serious. Um, if you have watched the demo, maybe you'll just be thinking, you know, I mean, you've, you've probably just skipped ahead on this one if you saw my episode of the demo. But, you know, feel free to skip ahead from, like, you know, to the end of it when I just upgrade the car ready for when we get properly out and go beyond the content that was in the demo. Anyway, I'll see you next time for that. I'll see you then.